Hello and welcome. You're watching Eye on Africa and I'm Clarisse Fortuné. Our top stories. Goodbye BDP, welcome UDC in a shock defeat and after nearly six decades in power, the Botswana Democratic Party concedes defeat. President Mokwetsi Masisi leaves the hot seat to his opponent, Duma Boko, leader of the Umbrella for Democratic Change. Algeria's anti-colonial key figure, Larbi Ben Midi, didn't kill himself, but was assassinated by French soldiers in 1957. President Macron's admission comes on the 70th anniversary of the start of Algeria's war for independence. And the Congo becomes the 15th African country to offer malaria vaccines against the mosquito-borne disease that kills tens of thousands of Congolese a year. So we start with this political earthquake in Botswana. After nearly six decades in power since independence in 1966, the Botswana Democratic Party won only few parliamentary seats. Voters delivered a shock defeat to the party. Duma Boko of the Umbrella for Democratic Change will replace President Mukwetsi Masisi, who conceded defeat. Emily Boyle. After 58 years in power, the Botswana Democratic Party has been defeated by a landslide. Voters in the southern African country overwhelmingly supported opposition leader Duma Boko of the Umbrella for Democratic Change coalition. We've lost this election massively, right? And uh, we need to come to terms with it and make space and the opportunity to the newly elected leaders and respect them and support them so that they can succeed, because it's Botswana's success that's most important. The BDP had governed the country since independence from Britain in 1966. Analysts say socio-economic grievances, especially among young people, saw a drop in support. The Botswana economy is largely reliant on the diamond trade that is facing lower demand. The new president campaigned for a diversification of the economy, and that proved popular among young voters. And now let's bring in Emmanuel Botzhali, he's a professor of public administration at the University of Botswana. Welcome, professor. So first, my question is, did you see it coming? Thank you for having me. No, on, honestly, I did not see it coming. Uh, uh, Pre-election, I had um, predicted that uh, the ruling Botswana Democratic Party will win. And I was expecting the, the opposition, particularly the UDC, to beg a few constituencies, but not uh, on the scale that we, we just saw uh, uh, yesterday and today. So what do you think contributed to this result? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's so difficult to uh, really uh, fi find out really what, what's happened. But I, I guess it has to do with the, with the fact that um, uh, people were uh, really uh, yearning for change Remember that uh, the ruling party, you know, has been in power since uh, 1965. That will be almost 60 years, and you, you now see people um, saying that you know it's time for you know for change. There's been talk about a regime change for a long time in Botswana. So Botswana is one of the top diamond producers. Tourism is also a strong sector. A lot of people voted against the poor economic performance, isn't it? Yes, of course, you see, um, the economy really matters because here you are talking about uh, bread and butter issues. And uh, when you listen to the electioneering and politicking uh, before the elections, it was really the opposition saying, no, look, we do have alternative programs in terms of job creation, social security and related issues. So essentially, um, they were talking to bread and butter, butter issues, which were now resonating with uh, the majority of the population of the voters. Including the, the youth? Yes, of course, uh, one would I mean, recall that uh, Botswana has um, a problem of unemployment alongside poverty, of course. But um, even though, of course, at national level, it could be talking around 26% um, or so. When it comes to the youth, uh, particularly, you find that these figures will be uh, in the 30s or so. That essentially means that uh, the youth are disproportionately affected by unemployment and uh, for them certainly uh, when you have uh, you know the opposition uh, promising job creation that's a message that will certainly 
uh, find resonance uh, with uh, the unemployed, with particularly unemployed graduates who, remember, most of them will be your Gen Z or millennials. And these are the people who are very vocal and assertive in terms of uh, their uh, social rights, like the right to, to work. And one of the, the first measures that uh, Duma Aboko uh, said he will going to put into place is creating 450 to 500,000 jobs within five years. How is he going to keep his promises? You know, um, winning an election is very easy, right? And then, you know, go governing a country becomes, you know, another uh, different uh, project completely. So from where I'm sitting, I'm yet to hear the details in terms of how, you know, they will go about this uh, job creation. But like, like I said, um, yes, of course, there's been an election, you know, there's been a win, the, euph the euphoria would wear off. And then after the honeymoon is over, we get to the business of governing. That's when you will see how those uh, electoral promises are being translated into something concrete. So can you tell us a bit uh, more about uh, Duma Boko, uh, uh, quickly, if possible? Who is this uh, president? A well-known uh, human rights lawyer. I mean, he has been in politics for quite some time. He became the leader of the Botswana Front uh, in, uh, in, in, in 2010, and he became the leader of the UDC in 2012. So he's, he has basically been in the trenches for quite some time. I mean, he's really quite known in Botswana and, and in the region, particularly in SADC. Thank you very much, Emmanuel Bothale, Professor of Public Administration at the University of Botswana. Thank you very much for your analysis. Now, it took 67 years for French President Emmanuel Macron to acknowledge that Larbi Banmidi, a key figure in Algeria's war of independence against France, had been killed by French soldiers after his arrest in 1957. The admission comes on the 70th anniversary of the Toussaint Rouge, a day which marked the start of Algeria's war for independence. Laurent Bercecher has the story. November 1st, 1954, a series of attacks erupted across French Algeria, marking the start of the country's war of independence. In Algiers, homemade bombs exploded at the same time. In the north, raids on barracks and farms took place simultaneously. That day, on which 70 attacks were carried out, would later come to be known as Bloody All Saints Day, in French, La Toussaint Rouge. The offensive was orchestrated by the newly created National Liberation Front. Among the group's founding members, this man, Larbi Ben Midi, a longtime militant for Algeria's independence, who wouldn't live to see his dream come to pass. After his arrest in 1957, French authorities said Ben Midi committed suicide in jail, a version of events which never truly convinced the Algerian public. Whether they supported him or not, no Algerian at the time could believe that someone of that stature would give up the fight. It was impossible. For decades, the truth surrounding Ben Midi's death remained shrouded in mystery, until 2013, when former French general Paul Osares admitted to having him executed. It took 11 more years for the French government to officially confirm Ben Midi's killing, a symbolic acknowledgement by President Emmanuel Macron, which came as Algeria celebrated the 70th anniversary of its War of Independence. Now, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, health authorities have launched a campaign to vaccinate against malaria. It's a milestone in a Central African country where malaria kills tens of thousands of people a year. Emil Livingston in Kinshasa has more. The first vaccine doses against malaria have been injected in DR Congo, where the tropical disease remains one of the largest killers. On Thursday, the country's health ministry announced that it had started an immunization campaign in the west of the country, which aims to protect children in particular. 
DR Congo and Nigeria are together the hardest hit by malaria on the African continent. There were over 27 million malaria cases in Congo in 2022, the year the most recent statistics were taken. Nearly 25,000 people were killed by the disease the same year, with about 70% of the fatalities occurring in children under the age of five. In its first phase, about 175,000 children are due to be vaccinated in the western Congolese province of Congo Central. Eventually, medical teams will fan out across the country. A government action plan also foresees handing out mosquito nets and spraying insecticides to control the spread of the pests. DR Congo received over 790,000 doses of the R21 Atrix M malaria vaccine in June. Similar campaigns using the same vaccine in other African countries have led to significant drops in child mortality. The World Health Organization described the start of the campaign in DR Congo as, I quote, a major milestone. Now to Uganda. 36 opponents from the Forum for Democratic Change were released on bail this Thursday after several months in detention. They have been accused of terrorism by the authorities since their arrest this summer. But the party and their lawyers insist on their innocence. The details with Clément Diroma. It's a relief for one of Uganda's main opposition parties, the Forum for Democratic Change. 36 of its members were released on bail by the High Court in Kampala after three months in detention. They are accused by authorities of preparing terrorist acts and were arrested at the end of July in Kenya, then sent back to Uganda. According to the prosecution, the activists had traveled to the neighboring country to receive terrorist training and the investigation is still ongoing. But according to their party, the FDC and their lawyers, the 36 uh, suspects had actually uh, traveled to attend uh, leadership seminars aimed at young members. Uh, several NGOs and prominent opposition figures had called uh, for their release. That has not happened, but the group is not allowed to travel outside of the country and must await the end of the investigation and the start of the trial, which has already uh, been postponed twice by the judges. The 36 opponents face a potential life sentence. Clement de Roma's reports on Uganda concluding our edition of Eye on Africa. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more news on France 24.